next I wanted to make another book tag and as you can see this one is the representation book tag or something like that uh, the original tag is by Iris Moon you can see uh, the video down there I'm gonna put the link uh, it's about how well or bad represented we feel in books or in, in any media uh, yeah so let's start with the questions okay, so question number one introduce yourself what are your identities um, hi my name is Monteluna I'm 29 years old and um, I'm Mexican uh, Mexican as hell <laughs> and um, I have depression and anxiety and I'm weird as fuck yeah uh, question number two what was the first uh, piece of media in which you felt represented? Mm, it's probably not a book because uh, growing up most of the stuff I read was like in textbooks in school or at the library so so it was um, mainly uh, Mexican literature or uh, Latin American literature so yeah, in books I don't think I felt well represented uh, but the first time I felt like there was someone, there was a character kind of like me was uh, watching Edward Scissorhands I know it's weird but like I felt like I wasn't the only weird one and like how everyone else looks at him and he feels like the outsider and like everyone makes fun of him and like I, I remember watching it like when I was like maybe four maybe younger um, and I feel like poor kid <laughs> I totally know how he feels and um, yeah I've always felt a lot like Edward's his friends sad <laughs> but yeah I think that's uh, the first character I, I, I related to is there a character in your favorite book genre that represents you in some way? Uh, probably yes. Uh, not sure if it's my favorite genre, but I read a lot of uh, contemporary YA. So mental illness, it's like widely uh, represented in books. Uh, how well, I'm not sure. I've seen a couple that I feel like I relate to. So, yeah. Uh, probably, like, uh, I don't remember her name. Uh, Charlotte, the main character in Golden Pieces by Kathleen Glasgow. Uh, it's a very depressing book, uh, but I relate a lot to her, and it's scary. <laughs> I'm not gonna say anything else. Uh, Charlie from uh, The Perks of Being a Wildflower, a lot, <laughs> like a lot. <laughs> uh, another one is Craig from It's Kind of a Funny Story, um, yeah, he has depression, he has suicidal thoughts, yeah, this is fun. And probably not YA, and not depressing, but I feel like I relate like a lot to Luna Lovewood from the Harry Potter series like a lot <laughs> I'm also a Ravenclaw and I'm crazy like I said I'm weird uh, whenever I talk like I talk about stuff that nobody else understands uh, yeah and I like that her name is Luna like me question number four what is the wor worst representation you have ever read of one of your identities uh, that I have ever read um, yeah uh, the Mexican part I don't know I there's really not a lot of uh, Mexican Hispanic characters in books that are really really worth of even talking like you know they're Mexican and you know like but yeah that's it <laughs> they barely like in one or two uh, scenes um, or like they really don't talk about like 
their Mexicanness or their yeah so it's weird like I don't know yeah I mean I don't talk a lot about my Mexicanness either but <laughs> I mean so but yeah I don't about that it's it's pretty much the fact that there's not a lot Mm, but yeah, I mean, if I want to like read something where like there's Mexican characters, I have to rely, of course, in Mexican literature, and I can't really get a lot of it here, so it's hard to like read a lot of it. And usually, the ones you can get are like classics, so they're like really old, or, like from the 60s or something, so like. I wouldn't relate either, and I don't know. <laughs> so yeah, but about mental illness, uh, there's probably a few that I can remember right now. But the one I can think about is uh, 13 Reasons Why. Uh, even though she never mentions uh, she has depression, she kind of like uh, talks about her her behavior. And it's like red flags of depression. She probably feel like that, but like they blame the whole suicide and everything on these kids, and like it's not good. Like no, no. Why don't we talk about her mental mental illness? Like yeah, that's the cause. I mean, yeah, it's a difficult topic to talk about. No, uh, but yeah, I don't think neither the book or the or the TV show. Uh, yeah, it's not. Let's not talk about it. I mean, I think it opened the door like for people to talk about it and to talk about depression and suicide and mental illness. But the show itself and the t and the book, no. I just. I won't talk about it. Question number five. Uh, what is the best representation you have ever read? Um, about mental illness. About depression, I'm not sure. I mean, probably uh, the book that I already mentioned, uh, Girl in Pieces. Um, because it does reflect, I mean, in my opinion, a lot of how it feels to have depression. And yeah, all of that, it's really overwhelming and it reflects it's really sad and it's a lot but that's why I related to it in my opinion it's my experience I know for a lot of people it's not the same way but in my own uh, experience it is uh, also Troll Told the Way Down by John Green it's a perfect example of how it is to live with anxiety even though my anxiety levels are not um, as bad as uh, the main characters I do really a lot to it and it's yeah <laughs> I really love this one and the last one is uh, Gabby a girl in pieces again another one that's, girl, that's called a girl in pieces by Isabel Quintero uh, this one is the one I'm, I'm reading right now. I'm like halfway through it and I'm really liking it. I uh, just bought it like last week and I, I wanted to start right away. Mm, why? This one is about a girl who's 17. She's Mexican American and she has a, uh, I don't want to say a lot of issues, but like it's mainly about growing up. It's about like, um, uh, being Mexican <laughs> and the whole uh, yeah, how society how or culture mm, uh, wants something from you like uh, she talks about like how her mom is always telling her uh, your girl you shouldn't be doing this you shouldn't be too easy with guys even though I mean, she's only kissing Boy, it's about like growing up being Mexican. Uh, even though she's Mexican American, uh, it it's different than my experience. 
because I'm, I mean, I'm like 100% Mexican, born in Mexico and everything. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's, it, it's about family and like, uh, yeah, Mexican families and everything that comes with it, how your family, uh, judges you in every way and like, uh, they expect something from you, especially if you're a girl, because they want you to be like, a housewife and like uh yeah things like that and like her mom is always telling her if you lose weight you can maybe find a boyfriend and like you know how many times I've heard that <laughs> uh yeah so I can relate a lot to it like literally like half an hour I was reading and I was crying like I'm not I'm not making this up it's yeah it's too relatable in that way I mean the way she talks about food, uh, and I mean, the fact that she talks about Mexican food, I really like, I'm really liking it, uh, yeah, uh, and the final question, uh, do you think that your identities are underrepresented or misunderstood in the books you read? Totally, uh, like I said, uh, there's not a lot of, um, uh, Mexican characters or Hispanic characters in books only if they're like the friend of the friend and they probably like they just mention it uh, or like their name is Hispanic and you know like yeah you don't see a lot of it uh, there was actually yeah the, in Fangirl I think it was the boyfriend she has it in the beginning uh, uh, she uh, I don't remember his name, but he was Mexican and at one point like she talks about like going with his family you know like eating like Mexican food or something I think it was friend girl I remember but yeah like there's there's not a lot of, uh, there's not a lot of uh, Hispanic characters Mexican or yeah especially main characters um, you don't see that a lot which is weird. Uh, probably the me the mental illness thing. It's like you see that a lot. Like probably like forty percent of the YA books are uh, about mental illness. So yeah, the part it's. But there's one thing that I haven't seen in any book. Uh, the fact that some people don't have relationships. Yeah, you. Know, uh, I have seen good like uh, a sexual representation. That's the thing you see when like in a book there's not romance. It's because um, yeah, the characters are sexual or it's about something else, so they don't talk about romance. But like, you don't see characters where like there's really like nothing. I mean. Uh, I identify as a straight woman and it's not the fact that I'm not attracted to guys, it's the fact that guys are not attracted to me. So like usually it's really, I don't want to say hard because that makes it like really dramatic, but uh, it's kind of like not disappointing. I don't, I don't know what the word is, but like in every book you read we're like, the main character at the beginning says, like, Oh my god, I'm 17, and I haven't had a boyfriend yet. You have, I mean, you can be pretty sure, 100% sure that at the end of the book, she's gonna have a boyfriend, or at least has had sex with someone, or like, kiss someone, or like, has had some guy like her. Yeah. <laughs> like, there's not a book where, like, I like that guy but like yeah I have zero chances and it's never gonna happen uh yeah and like the book finishes and yeah nothing happens so like every book I read we're like oh maybe this can be the one because I mean she's talking about being for forever alone but like halfway through the book she finds this guy who likes her and like two pages later they're kissing and like Okay, so like, really, there's no one like me. Yeah, like, 
I mean, you can be 17 and say nobody likes you because, I mean, you're 17. You, you have, like, a long way to go. And, like, when you're 29 and, like, you see 17-year-old girls saying that, and, like, they have more experience than you, it's, yeah, uh, I'm not going to talk about it because, yeah. But you know what I mean. Anyway, this is getting too personal. Uh, I think I'm gonna end it here and thank you for watching. And uh, like I said, I was gonna post like at least once a week, but it's not happening lately because I haven't edited the vlogs yet. But yeah, it's happening. Thanks for watching. And I'm not going to tag anyone because, I mean, no one watches these videos. But if you're watching, if you want to do it, go ahead and, yeah, let me know what you think. And thank you for watching. And see you soon. Bye.